guys hey welcome back to another episode of bad beast barbecue hey today we're going to be cooking some baby back ribs well tomorrow we're going to be cooking some baby back ribs because tonight we're making the brine for the baby back ribs okay now i got this idea i'm walking through fresh time and fresh time grocery stores for us here it's kind of like whole foods around the world it's got all kind of unique stuff in it right so i'm walking through the other day and i find this this is boar heads brown sugar and spice ham glaze and i'm like oh man that sounds so good okay so what we're going to do is we are going to cook us some baby back ribs and uh we're going to glaze them down with some of this boar heads and see exactly how that tastes okay now what i want to do instead of just making a simple brine we want to uh use a brine that had a little bit of uh, uh pink salt in it okay to try to give that pink color and that ham like taste okay hopefully this comes out this is a recipe i found on allrecipes.com uh, and i kind of uh, cut it in half and in third so i'm hoping this comes out i'm hoping the ribs don't be too salty i'm not planning on brining them for several days i'm only going to brine them overnight and then we're going to take them out and we're going to smoke them tomorrow like we normally do uh hit them with some black pepper uh, and a couple of other herbs. I don't think I'm going to season them with any salt because the brine should make them salty enough. And then we're going to go ahead and glaze them down at the end with the boar heads. Okay. And we're going to see exactly how it comes out. Could be successful. Could be a failure. I'm not sure. But hey, that's what we're here to do. We're here to try new things. Right. Okay. So right now I have uh, this. Is, this is a four quart container. I'm going to use three quarts or so of water. I got one quart in the pot here warming right now and i got the other two quarts here on the side cold water so what we're going to do is we're going to put all of our ingredients in here while it's simmering so they can dissolve we're going to put it in there let it cool down throw the cold water on top of it and then we're going to prep our ribs so hey hey don't go nowhere hey we're going to do the short prep work and we're going to see exactly how this turns out mm. nothing like a little libation all right, guys, so we have our water. It's simmering now. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Okay, so the water is simmering now, so let's go ahead and put our, our spices in. Okay, the first thing we have is some pickling spice. And we got a teaspoon and a half of pickling spice. So we're going to put that in there. Okay. And we have a teaspoon and a half of the pink salt. Okay, be careful how much of this stuff you use because this stuff is very potent. Okay. All right. And we have a a half a cup of kosher salt. You know, normally when I do my brines, I do equal parts of kosher salt to equal parts of brown sugar. But since we're adding the pink salt also, I reduce the amount of kosher salt in the recipe. Okay? Okay? And then finally, we're going to add one cup of packed brown sugar. Okay? All right. So now we're going to let this simmer and we're going to let this uh, dissolve and then uh, cool down a little bit and then we're going to pour it in our container. Okay, so hey, don't go nowhere. We're going to prep our uh, baby back ribs, remove the, the silver skin and stuff, and we're going to go ahead and get them prepped for the brine. So hey, hang around. All right, guys, so here's our container and we got our brine here. It's kind of cooled down there. I might have to let it cool a little bit more because it's still kind of warm. Pour this in here like this. All right, and we're going to pour some cold water on top of it to kind of make cool it down a little bit. All right. Let me make sure it's... Okay, it's definitely cool. So we're going to go ahead and put our baby back ribs inside of our container. All right. I'm going to kind of fold them over so that all of the rib is inside of the container. There we go. All right. So it's fully submerged. We got our lid on here. All right. So 
we got our brine our ribs ready uh brining we're going to put these in the fridge overnight we're going to be cooking these on the weber using the slow and sear and we're going to be using some uh mesquite wood chips from uh wild wood uh grilling and using some of their products so hey hey meet us out on the deck tomorrow morning and we'll go ahead and we'll see how these things turn out all right guys it's uh the next day and uh our baby back ribs have been brining in our uh, mixture for about 12 hours now so uh, as you can see I've already uh, poured the brine off of them I've rinsed them off for any excess salt and uh, it's gonna wipe off some of this uh, pickling seasoning that's that seems to have attached itself to the back side of the meat okay like I said yesterday we're gonna be cooking, it, put, cooking this on the Weber with the slow and sear and also got the dripping griddle inside of there just to control airflow a little bit more we're not going to put any type of oil or any kind of binder on these ribs these ribs are moist enough to uh, adhere to take the uh, the rub that we're going to use okay so take this glove off here so this is the rub that we're going to be putting on our ribs this has no salt in it because uh, the brine should have taken care of the salty portion of our recipe, okay? This has paprika in it, chili powder, um, coarse black uh, ground pepper, and it has the garlic powder in there. I'll put the ratios of this down in the description block so you can check it out, okay? So we're just going to give ourselves a, a nice coating of this on both sides of the rib. Uh, I didn't, and there's no sugar in this uh, either because that boar's head glaze that we're going to be using has brown sugar in it. It's already sweet, I assume, because I haven't tasted it yet. So we did not go with any sugar in this rub. Right? And the, uh, the Weber is already set up out on the deck <clears throat> with the slow and sear and everything. So it's, it's coming up to temperature. Uh, I only started off with about five hot coals because I want to try to keep the temperature down in the area of 225 to 230 for this cook here. I don't want to go too hot too fast because even though I brine these, I don't want to take the chance of them drying out. Okay. Alright guys, so our ribs have been on the Weber for about three uh, and a half, almost four hours now. I think I got about 15 minutes left for to get the four hour mark. And uh, we've had them wrapped in butcher paper as you saw for the last two hours. Okay, so they're about ready to come out of that. So we're going to go ahead and get our glaze together. Okay, so first we're going to have two tablespoons of butter. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there and let that melt. Now this stuff is really, 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 really thick. Really, really thick as you can see. So we're going to scoop some out with a small spoon and melt it down warm it up with the butter until I get enough to be able to glaze the entire rack of ribs okay all right let's give that a stir and turn this heat down start to warm this glaze up Mixing in with the butter. Normally we put butter in the wrap when we're doing our ribs uh, to give it a little glistening shine, a little buttery flavor. But uh, because we were using butcher paper, I didn't want to do that. So we're going to put the butter inside of the glaze, all right?
right, guys, so I got my blade here. We're going to flip these over and uh, cut into these and see what we got. All right. I want one right down the middle. I guess I'm losing a lot of my glaze like this. Turn these back over. Ooh. Well, they look nice. What do you think? Look real good. That's all right there. Very, very hot though. Hot as heck. Woo! All right. So, I love the the pink color. Now, I'm, I'm thinking that the the excessive pink color of the inside of the ribs came from the the um, the pink salt. Okay, and uh, just the big this thing, biggest thing is I'm hoping that they're not overly salty. Okay, so let's go ahead and bite into these and see what we get. Smell good. Oh, you know what? This tastes a little bit like ham. This tastes all right here. Mm. Yeah, perfect amount of saltiness. The sweetness of the boar's head glaze is fantastic. They're moist, they're buttery. Mm. Oh my goodness. Man, these are fabulous. I think I found another staple in my arsenal of recipes. Wow. Mm. I can't even stop eating these. Mmm. And these are fantastic. Now let me clean myself up right quick. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I got to say this is a fantastic cook, a phenomenal combination of flavors. I'm glad I didn't put any salt in the rub because the brine itself gave it the perfect saltiness. I mean, this tastes somewhat like ham, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, it's kind of a quick little brine cure overnight. And um, with the boar's head glaze on it, man, this is fantastic. I'm loving these ribs, okay? So this is definitely going to be one that I'm going to be doing over and over again, okay? Well, another successful cook. That's all we got time for today. Uh, I want to thank uh, Dave Parrish over at Adrenaline Barbecue for uh, sending us that slow and sear a while back and the drip and griddle. They perform phenomenally. Check out uh, Adrenaline Barbecue's website if you're interested in a slow and sear. They got a slow and sear 2.0 out now where the water chamber comes out. That gives you a little bit more room for charcoal if you're not planning on cooking with a water barrier. Okay, so hey, check them out. Uh, also, I want to thank the folks at Wildwood Grilling Products. They sent us a box of wood chips. The mesquite flavor on these ribs are fantastic. I mean, the combination of flavors with the sweetness and the uh, savoriness of the uh, of the brine plus the mesquite of the, the wood, all of that works very, very, very well. So thank you guys. Check out their site if you're interested in uh, in uh, any of their products. And um, Therm Pro, uh, I wanna thank those guys for sending us uh, a thermometer. The one that we use is one we actually bought, but they did send us another one that we're gonna be using in the near future. So check out some of their products. They got some real nice stuff for us old folks, cooks who are blind and uh, big handed. Uh, I love the size of their buttons. I don't have to kind of struggle to read. Uh, what the uh, instructions on the button or in the back says. Okay, so that's great. So, uh, well, I think that's all we have time for tonight. Hey, like we always say, where there's smoke, there's fire. If it's fire, then damn it, there just might be a barbecue there. I'm gonna chop these up and take them some of these to work tomorrow. Gonna make them freak out. Hey guys, we'll see you around the smoker. Cheers. Rain on, baby. Rain on.